Hey guys, 420 Scene here. Hope everyone's having a super stony day. Let me know what you're talking on and where you're watching the video from. I always like to know. Be sure to drop a like, subscribe, and if you want access to all my secret unlisted grow and smoke videos, check us out on Patreon. I'm gonna have the link in the upper right hand corner over here. Today we're gonna be covering some of the different water resources and whether you can use it for your ladies or not, and if I would recommend it. And I think this is really important because trying to choose your water source could make you or break you, like as far as your runs. I I feel like my answer towards the end of the video could shock some of you guys, so definitely stick around to the end. No matter where you are and what water source you're going with, make sure to do a little bit of research about the water that you're gonna be using because there are different types, and especially for those beginners out there, I feel like the different types of water resources are totally overlooked. I mean, water's just water, see? That's the mindset of a lot of beginners, but water is not just water. Also, I feel like I gotta point this out, I'm talking about soil, not hydro. I've always been a soil guy. Most of you guys have, that have been on the channel for a long time already know that. So if you're looking for a hydro setup, I'm probably not the guy to watch. But I feel like most of you guys are definitely doing soil runs. I mean, you know, at least that's what I've noticed based on the comments that a lot of you guys have left me. I also think it goes without saying that you need to be smart with where you're spending your money. I know everybody's waiting for me to talk about reverse osmosis, but let's be real. It can be pricey. We're gonna be talking about reverse osmosis a little bit later on. It's gonna be towards like the end of the video. And if you're just starting out and you're not sure if horticulture is for you, you don't wanna lay all your chips out on the table. You know I mean? You don't wanna be spending a whole bunch of money just to find out that this isn't something that you actually enjoy doing. So keep that in mind. But first, let's talk about rainwater because a few of you guys on Patreon have been asking me whether rainwater would be a good option. I personally think rainwater is probably gonna be one of the better options out there just because from my experience, the pH levels sit right. They sit pretty much where they need to. So in most cases, you don't really have to worry about pHing rainwater. I mean, it's already slightly acidic. Let's just take a step back, right? All over the world, when rain comes in, do you think there's some dude running around with a pH meter trying to pH every in the world? Fuck no. All you gotta do is just get one of those big 55 gallon drums and collect that rainwater that you're gonna be getting out of it. It's just, I mean, it's just easy. It's the easiest way to do it, you know what I mean? Then you could put your your jug or whatever you need and just fill it up to the top and you're good to go. Plus, I mean, it's free. It's clean, obviously. And if you got one of those big containers, I mean, you could really collect a lot of that water, especially if you live in an area where it rains a lot. I mean, even if you got a 55 gallon drum, you know, and you're not gonna use all of it, you're using one gallon at a time. Listen, it's always better to have more rainwater than to worry about, oh, what's going on? I don't have any rainwater. <laughs> I bet England could literally sell rainwater for profit with as much rain as they get. Maybe not, I don't know. I know it's illegal in some parts of the world though. Maybe not a good idea. That is not my official advice. You know, just thinking about it, like, I don't really think there's anything negative about rainwater. I mean, the only thing I could probably think that would be like falling under negative is if you just don't get a lot of rain, but that doesn't have anything to do with the actual quality of the rainwater itself. You just don't live in a rain-friendly environment, I guess. Next, let's talk about tap water. It's probably the easiest way to get water. Just turn on your sink and voila, you got water. Tap water is kind of controversial in the horticulture world, and I'm gonna break down my opinion about tap water, but first, I wanna point out that tap water is always gonna have a higher pH level than rainwater, at least from my experience. My tap water would always be like, like from 7.3 all the way up to nine, believe it or not, you know, from all the different places that I've lived at over the years. And you also have to worry about where your tap water is gonna be coming from. Like if you live in a trash city that doesn't really give a shit about their water, you know, you could have chloramine in it or other chemical compounds. So that's why water is tricky and totally controversial. A lot of people love tap water. A lot of, there are people out there that are like, oh no, tap water sucks, can't use tap water. Now I bet you're wondering what my take is. I've mostly used tap water, but I wouldn't just use the tap water by itself. Most of you guys that have been following me for a long time already know that I like to aerate my water. You know, some people might be like, oh bro science, doesn't make any bit of difference. But guess what? If I'm in a situation where I have nothing to lose and everything to gain, then I'm gonna go for it, right? So what you can do is you can aerate for either 24 hours or you can just have like a five gallon bucket and just keep aerating. That's what I like to do. I just have a bucket constantly aerating from veg flowering all the way through. I just constantly just keep keep aerating the water. So when you use a gallon for your ladies or however much you're using, just keep refilling it. That's what I've been doing. You know, I've been doing it this way and it, it just seems like my ladies have always loved it. Actually, now that I'm talking about it, I watered them yesterday and they're, I mean, they're boom, praying like this. But again, it's also gonna depend on the quality of your tap water. Not all tap water is gonna be the same. So make sure to be doing your own research on your town 
or your city or find out a little bit more about your water and you can even test it with a pH meter. And you know, I'm gonna go the further mile and tell you, you can even practice adjusting your pH because sometimes you need more drops to lower or raise it than other resources. See, that's some stuff that people aren't gonna be telling you. I'll give you an example real quick. I already know that if I use my water, I'm gonna need about 55 drops of pH down to get it around 6.0. How do I know this? Because that's just the way it's been. But here's the kicker. Back in the old apartment when I lived in the city, remember the old body water days? I don't know, YouTube might not like that I said that. It took about 80 drops to lower it to around 6.0, so practice around your water and your pH kits. Listen, you're only gonna be doing yourselves a favor. Next, let's talk about distilled water. I'm gonna go on record and just say I am not a fan of distilled water. It's literally pure water, like 100% kind of pure. And I know depending on the style of growth, this could be a beneficial thing or a detrimental thing. Depends on what side of the fence you're on. I already know what you're thinking though. What would be safer than that? I mean, 100% pure. Whenever you hear 100% pure, that's usually like a good thing, right? But the problem is with distilled water, there's no minerals good minerals that you need. I mean, it takes out a lot of the bad shit, but it takes a lot of the good shit too. No copper, no zinc, no boron in your water, and these are things that you're gonna need to give to your ladies. Those micronutrients, notice how I say to keep your pH levels around 6.0. I know the range, even in the last video, I said keep it between 5.8 and 6.3. I am stressing that out even in this video. A part of the reason is because those same micronutrients that are found in your regular water need it to be around 6.0 so your ladies can grab a Hold of it. To be fair though, I have heard that distilled water is good for hydro, but like I said in the beginning of the video, I'm not a hydro guy, so to me it's kind of null and void. And not for nothing, it can get really expensive really quickly, and I just don't think you need distilled water personally, and I just feel like distilled water is only good if you've been doing this for a long time and you really know what levels you're trying to get your water at. All right, here's another example. This is probably the best way I can explain what I'm talking about. You know how ProMix is blank soil? Soil. And the reason I love it so much is because I can create my own soil. I don't have to go Fox Farm. I don't have to go Roots Organic. I don't have to go anywhere because I can create my own shit with the blank soil that I have with the amendments that I have. It's kind of like the same thing with distilled water. It's blank water. It's got nothing in it. So I only recommend distilled water if you're trying to fine tune your water and know what the fuck you're doing. <sighs> this brings us to the next one, the famous one. The one everybody wants me to talk about. Let's talk about reverse osmosis, RO for short. So if you hear anybody talking about RO, they're talking about reverse osmosis, duh. We all know this, right? Hey, there might be somebody that doesn't know, all right? I personally haven't used reverse osmosis, but I do know quite a bit about it. I did my research on it. I do know a decent amount. I have talked to Cali Green. I, I've watched his videos. He uses nothing but RO water, at least from the videos that I've watched. I don't really watch a lot of horticulture videos, but like I do remember Cali Allie Green mentioning RO water. So here's the deal. Pretty much it's a system that uses pressure to force water through a semi-permeable membrane. And the whole point of it is to get your water through, but it, what it does is it filters a lot of the crap that's in it. And it does filter most of the stuff, but it's still not gonna be considered as pure as distilled water. So don't get that mistaken. Reverse osmosis is not as pure as distilled. What you can do is you can have it hooked up to your sink and you're pretty much just turning your tap water into reverse osmosis filtered water. I feel like if you've been doing this for a long time and this is kind of the career path that you're trying to take or you're really taking this horticulture thing seriously, I would recommend it. But it can be a bit expensive for some people. I personally don't think you need reverse osmosis. I don't think I would invest in reverse osmosis unless I'm starting to do this commercially, I guess. See, a lot of people have different opinions about reverse osmosis and I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying what my opinion is based on a lot of the research that I've done. And it is expensive, it's not cheap. I'm sure Amazon has some cheap RO systems out there. I don't know if they're any good. I've always been a firm believer of you get what you pay for. I'm gonna just say this because most people don't, but as long as your water quality is pretty good from your tap, I would just aerate it because you still want a lot of the good minerals to be in your water and I'm not sure if reverse osmosis is good when it comes to keeping some of the minerals that you do need. But I mean, for the price that it costs reverse osmosis, if your tap water is good quality and decent quality, you could just go with that. I'm just trying to save you guys a little bit of money. The only situation I would ever find myself where I need reverse osmosis is if my tap water is just really bad and I need a filtering process. And I know what you guys might be thinking. I'm probably the only one on the internet that's gonna say that I don't really care too much about reverse osmosis. 
diagnosis, but if you guys have seen my results, which most of you guys already had, you know, I got the Girl Scout cookies thing on the front page. You guys could check that out if you want. You're gonna find that tap water aerated with airstone. It's gonna get the job done. Of course, it really depends on the quality of your water. I can't stress that enough. It's a case by case thing, but I'm telling you guys my opinion based on my experience with tap water and not really needing to have reverse osmosis. So you could take what I say with a grain of salt or you can, you know, kind of pretty much do what I'm telling you guys and go with the tap water. But I can't stress that enough. It depends on your water quality. I don't need people being like, oh, oh, you know, it's reverse osmosis or nothing. Listen, guys, you could do whatever you want. I'm just giving you my personal opinion. I'm gonna throw this one out there because I know people have considered it and that's using bottled mineral water. I've considered it. I'm sure most people, a lot of people have considered using it. Just don't do it. Don't do it. It's expensive and it's just not necessary. Who's really gonna go to the grocery store and buy some mineral water just to give to your ladies, right? I mean, it's it just sounds insane. But there's a big but here, all right? The only situation where I feel like it would be appropriate to use bottled mineral water would be if, let's just say you have really horrible tap water quality. You can't use your tap water, right? It's filled, it's got chloramine in it, it's, it's trash. You don't know enough about distilled water enough to use it. And it's just way too expensive for you to set up an RO system. Then you're kind of, you're kind of in one of those situations, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. And that is probably gonna be the only logical reason I would see anybody going with bottled mineral water. Also guys, if there is something that I might have missed or left out, be sure to drop it in the comment section below. I know there's a lot of things that go into play when it comes to water and I hope I did cover a good amount of stuff. I know I haven't really come out with a video. I don't know if I ever came out with a video talking about the different types of water that's out there and available to you guys, but I feel like it's really important. I feel like it's overlooked by a lot of people that are just getting into horticulture, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video. And it's just really important to know the differences between the different types of water that's out there. So again, if I missed something, definitely let me know in the comments. Before I close off today's video, I wanna thank everyone on screen for supporting me on Patreon. I really appreciate the love and support. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and turn on your post notification bell so you miss out on any future videos. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. And as always, stay safe. Peace.